Council please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, now is the time for, oh, before I forget, no closed session tonight. And public comments. This is the time for public comments. Council may ask questions, but may take no action during the public comment section of the meeting, except to direct staff to prepare a report or place an item on a future agenda. If you are here to make comments on a specific agenda item, you may speak at that time. If not, this is the time. Please limit your remarks to five minutes. Speakers, please speak from the podium, state your name and mailing address so that city staff can respond to you in regard to your comments or provide you with information if appropriate. You are not required to state your name and address if you do so, if you do not desire to do so. Any speakers? Okay, moving right along. So apparently this is Think Pink Day, breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I understand there's a Fairchild Medical Center representative here, Elizabeth Langford. Yeah. Would you like to come down and receive? I'll probably wear pink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, for the rest of the audience, I will read this. Think pink, whereas early detection remains one of the best defenses against breast candor, cancer, whereas we endeavor to raise awareness of breast cancer and breast health throughout our community, whereas October is nationally recognized as Breast Cancer Awareness Month, whereas through the Fairchild Medical Center Foundation Mammography Fund, patients may receive mammograms at Fairchild Medical Center free of charge, which is important to notice. Um, whereas the Wairika Breast Cancer Run Walk will take place for the 10th year at Minor Street Park on Saturday, October 7th, 2017, that's this weekend. Whereas our community is encouraged to take part in the butterfly project and decorate a wooden butterfly to display in local businesses and locations to further awareness, further raise awareness throughout the month of October. Now therefore, I, in place of Joan Smith Freeman, mayor of the city of Wairika, do hereby declare Saturday, October 7th, 2017 to officially be known as Think Pink Day in Wairika, California. Thank you. Okay. Item number one: discussion, possible action, consent calendar. All matters listed under the consent calendar are considered routine and will be enacted by one motion unless any member of the council wishes to remove an item for discussion or a member of the audience wishes to comment on an item. The city manager recommends approval of the following consent calendar items. A, approval, ratification of payments issued from September 8th through September 21st, 2017. B, approval of minutes of the meetings held, meeting held September 7th, 2017. C, adopt, adopt resolution extending the suspension of section 13.76.010 of the Wairika Municipal Code allowing installation of banners on Fairlane Road. D, waive full text reading of all ordinances on the agenda. Ordinances shall be introduced and adopted by title only. Council? I'd like to remove 1B. 1B, anyone else? All right, at this time I'll accept a motion for A, C, and D. I make a motion that we approve uh, A, B, or was it C, or e? okay, A, B. C, and D? A, C, C and D. C, and B. No. A, C, and A, D. A, C, and D, excuse me. <laughs> One A, C, and D. All Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, B. I pulled 1B because you have an error. It's the approval of the minutes held September 21st. If you look oh. at the page, it says September oh. 21st. It's not September 7th. Oh, thank you. So the minutes are correct, but the, the minutes are correct, but the uh, ah, item the is mislabeled. Wrong. So we have okay. to 
label it September 21st. So I'll make a motion that we approve 1B on the minutes of the meeting held September 21st. Second. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number two, discussion possible action. Adopt resolution approving street closure associated with special event being held by Gary Nelson, known as the Family Fund Carnival, to be held on October 21st, 2017. Um, the applicant is here, and if you'd like to hear about the yes. event, then we would come on up, Gary. Well, you might not want to hear about it. <laughs> I, I, do. Did, I did give him the option. Yeah, <laughs> but, no, I'm gonna, the, the, this is what we're going to do. It's called the Family Fun Carnival. And it will be uh, various carnival, school style carnival stuff, beanbag toss, duck pond, stuff of this nature for the kids. All the prizes will be free, the games will be free, so that they everybody gets a chance to join in. We're, we don't want any child or person in Wairika not to join in on. Now, of course, also in our flyer it says that it's open to everybody from the age of 2 to 92. <laughs> so you qualify because you're <laughs> over 2. But uh, so there are some older children in town that are going to enjoy this as well. Also, along with this will be the grand opening of the carousel. And it will be the first time that tomorrow actually comes because you've all seen the sign in there that we're going to go, be open tomorrow. But of course, tomorrow doesn't normally come, but it will come on the 21st of October. It will be tomorrow. And so the carousel will ride, and we're going to allow each person to have one ride on the carousel uh, at this particular time. And the reason for one ride is that in the four hours, we're only able to handle around 500 people. And we hope to have more than that, but at least 500 people. But the capacity of the carousel for that period of time is 500 people. So. That's what we're going to be doing, and we want to close 3rd Street uh, only from the front of our building, which is basically the crosswalk area, to the back of our building, not including the parking lot ramps or uh, coolies parking lot ramps or anything of that nature. Just that short distance, we'll only have maybe four or five booths in there. We will have some other uh, performers showing things in there, um, face painting, hopefully mine, uh, boom. You know all kinds of things as well walking around there so we hope to have a fun carnival I want you all to join in and uh, come to our place thank you any questions <laughs> this is too simple <laughs> <laughs> pretty easy staff recommends approval council do i have a motion i'll make a motion did you ask if anybody else had comments <laughs> I, I did, sort of. I implied it when I said council. I'll make a motion that we uh, adopt a resolution approving the street closure with the fun, family fun car. Second. It's been first and second. All in approval? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Item three. Discussion possible action acceptance of treasurer's report and budget to actuals for the months of June and July 2017. Greta? Right. So, got the treasurer's report for June and July. Um, they're a little late because we try to close the books and clear out all the due to due funds between the funds prior to submitting the reports on here, but, um, and the close is coming along. That, um, right now we're looking at cash on hand of $21,836,000 and that's in um, marketable securities and cash and um, our investment in life is about $13.4 our CD portfolio fund is about $6.15 and the rest being in um, demand deposit accounts and um, that is uh, for June and then July is substantially the same, down about 500000 primarily because of the beginning of the year payment for insurance premiums and also some debt payments that we do, like for the <coughs> landfill, et cetera, in CalPERS at the beginning of the um, fiscal year. So that's primarily what that's attributable to. And um, the budget to actual for June, it looks like so far. 
um, that we're coming in better than expected on the general fund, which is always a good thing mm -hmm. on that. And I really haven't gotten into the departmental analysis, but should have that probably for you the next meeting. And I'm um, getting very close to um, releasing that and the um, this performance report for the quarter on that. So unless, if there are any specific questions, I can address those um, for you on that. But probably we'll have a more comprehensive report with the um, fiscal performance report and kind of how we did for the year. Okay. Call it kind of our really first um, detailed preliminary closing numbers. Okay. No? Yeah, the, the question I have is, First off, I look at the June excess of revenue over expense, and you're coming in two million three hundred and fifty-two thousand plus. But then I go to the next month in July and look at the same column, excess of revenue, and the budget showing a three point nine million dollar deficit. You're showing two point three million profit in the last fiscal year, but why are you showing 3.9 million deficit in the this fiscal year? So, um, the bottom of the yellow. Right. And that, I can't quite understand <laughs> why you're showing such a big negative. To show a large payout or something? So the operating what I'm showing on the operating budget for that one was that we were going to have in that adopted budget two million on the police department in uh, for fiscal year 18. So if you look in the operating budget expected deficit, it was going to spend down reserves on the construction of the police department. Okay, so I see two million there. Yeah. Okay, um, we so haven't incurred that yet, but we expected right. that event to happen. And then you'll be getting money back from the bond issue. Well, both that and we'll be taking out it out of reserves, existing reserves. Okay. But so the excess from last fiscal year, the 2.3 million is going to carry forward to this fiscal year. So that will help reduce it. That too. is correct. So there was um, planned spending from reserves in fiscal year 17, 18. Um, the one we're just coming into in July, and the biggest piece of that is the police right. building construction, and then also some capital outlay um, in for water projects as well. Um, so there was some tank planned tank replacement projects. So, um, I think water capital projects. Okay, eight hundred ninety-six thousand. Right, capital projects. So you see that um, that the budget is expecting us to spend um, one point two, almost two million in capital projects for the water system. Okay. And some of that, um, because we've applied for so the Prop One B funding, um, that's a moving target. We may not have to outlay as much of that as expected. Okay. So my major concern was that. We weren't operating on a deficit in this fiscal year. No, no. Okay. We did expect to um, go into reserves next year um, for planned projects on that. And the net actuals, it's really hard to look at July, but what happens in July is the reversal of all the rules because uh, a lot of the payments don't come in until August on some of the um, accruals for the modified accrual. Modified accrual accounting basis yeah. that we have to follow. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied by the end of the day here. Okay. <laughs> I was having a problem with the word editable and edible today. <laughs> Do you need any paper? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Are there any more questions? I'll make a motion then to approve item three, acceptance of treasurer's report in the budget. Second. For months of June and July. Still second. Um, okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Item four, discussion possible action, introduction, ordinance enacting chapter 9.60. 
entitled Alcoholic Beverages, Drinking in Open Containers in Public, and finding the adoption of the ordinance to be exempt from CEQA. Members of the Council, what you have in front of you is a what we call an open container ordinance. It prohibits uh, consumption of alcohol except where it's um, with, with a few exceptions. One of those is Greenhorn Park and then anything that happens by uh, permit. So we do have events, for example, in Minor Street Park and we allow alcohol during those events. We currently have a sort of a hodgepodge of rules. Most of them involve the parks, but we don't have anything uh, comprehensive. So this is a comprehensive uh, ordinance that tries to sort of maintain things where they are in terms of the parks and the community theater and any other places where we have uh, permits, but puts into place a, a general um, ban. So most other cities have this. Ketchup is good. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, I have a couple questions. So, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to like we have our events coming up, obviously, with the, so a couple of big ones that will be coming up would be Night of Light. Right. Um, did Carl apply to where we could have alcohol beverages <coughs> on this event? The we're going to look at all the events because there are some events because of the lack of this kind of ordinance where we right. kind of said, well, we don't need to specifically do that. So that might come back up in front of us again then on further uh, We'll probably possibly. handle a lot of those administratively. Okay. They, some of them may come back. Do you know off the top of your head whether that's... I don't happen? believe they asked for it this year. Yeah. The, what I heard was they, the chamber didn't want to do it. It might There might be another group, but by the time you pay all the ABC fees, and the, I was told it didn't really pan out. Oh, okay. Right. It's not that bad, actually. I am part of the bartending for for the fairgrounds yeah, as a fundraiser. And so any private party that goes into these events has to uh, acquire their own licensing right, through ABC. Right. And currently, I think it's $25. So it's not that big. No, no, no you're price. talking insurance, but right. the application yeah, for right. the event. Right. Probably the yeah. insurance, right? right. Yeah. No, you're right. Insurance is pretty spending. Yeah. But and also being in competition with, say, the tap house, who does provide right. mm -hmm. Right, and my only other concern is the whole thing about Greenhorn Park. Mm -hmm. um, I really do have great concerns on that. Um, being allowing alcohol in Greenhorn Park means all the problems we've had in the past of, uh, what do I want to say, transients or homeless activity, hanging out at the park and, and drinking at the park. So I don't know, you know, on that part. Well, um, okay. Uh, what? All this is is sort of looking to keep things status quo. Right. And so Greenhorn Park, if you want to go out and have a picnic and have a beer, you can do that. Right. Um, you can't do that in Minor Street Park unless there's a permit that allows that. Right. And any of the other neighborhood parks, they're not allowed. So Greenhorn is the only one, and it's because it has uh, picnic areas. I'm not necessarily arguing that that's the way it should right. always be. No, no. That, I guess that's, that that's my debate, too, is whether right. and I look at both sides of that good one. Okay, yeah, I understand that. I don't want to take away the privilege of people, like you said, hanging out and having right. a beer at Greenhorn Park, but then I don't want people hanging out there all day and doing right. stuff they shouldn't be doing, too. So there's kind of a fine line on that one, too, and I don't know what the proper answer is. Is it something that we go ahead and say yes on this, but we really think this through. Public intoxication. Huh? It's called public intoxication. It is. Yeah, I mean, we'll, they'll just grab them and, and scoop them up and sign them. Yeah, there are other laws. This this has to do with drinking, period. So right. there are situations where, um, you know, like in Greenhorn Park, uh, Councilmember Pacheco is correct. If they are intoxicated, then right, which then that goes a, that would go for any place though in town, though. I mean, that's, right, that's, that's a, a different general thing. rule of thumb any place. Right. Even the way it stands right now at this point, you know, if they're walking downtown, they, they can't right. bust them unless they're intoxicated. So correct. So we're trying so. to. You know, uh, clamp down on that while still allowing it in the in the other location. So, so I have a comment. So, sure. um, on page two, line sixty nine. Since uh, right. since we're talking about editing, I think within is one word. Okay. But while we're on penalties, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I, I apologize if I didn't mention this before, but I I think a hundred bucks of the first offense is kind of steep. 
you know, someone pops a beer and doesn't realize it. He isn't even public and talk, publicly intoxicated. I understand there's discretion involved, but Correct. it seems pretty steep, 100 on the first, first one. This is actually our standard, um, other than for parking tickets, this is our standard. 100 bucks, 100 bucks, 100 bucks. Right. It's but, kind of like Costco. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of my visits. All right, well, if that's the standard, I guess, um, just seems. That doesn't mean we have to go with it. It seems a little steep to me. It, I just, well, 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 if you're you know, I just, true, yes. You know, you get you get some one person in a group who tends to mouth off out of an officer. Everyone else is being mellow. You know, the officer might get a little bit, you know, okay. You know, he's trying to be nice, but you know, we're going to do this black and white now. And and now, who has a beer? One hundred bucks. One hundred bucks. One hundred bucks. One hundred bucks. And I don't know. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. But it right. just seems to me that. A hundred's pretty steep for holding a beer. I mean, first offense. And especially if we're just rolling this out, um, I mean, it's including a lot of places. You know. so basically public spaces, yeah. In well, terms which we didn't have before, really. Right. So but in terms of the, the, the parks, we are recognizing the same. It hasn't changed. That's fine. From what we've what we've done before. Well, I still think it's steep, yeah. but I mean, I understand. But I just, what's the? Can we? Can we? How does this work? If we if we make a change now with that, can we still publish it with the change? We have to bring it back to introduce. I think we bring it back to. Okay. okay. Is there any is back. there any critical need for getting this on the books right right away? Um. No. It, I mean, we haven't had it, so it's not it. I wouldn't want to delay it a long time, but if you wanted to delay the meeting, that wouldn't be a big deal. So, yeah. so I guess my comment to my fellow council members is I just think it's, I just think it's pretty steep. I mean, heck, you could buy a six pack of beer, you know, some places for what? Good. I mean, uh, you know, six bucks, maybe, maybe five bucks, four bucks, and it just seems like for, I mean, I, I got, I got the reason why, and I'm okay with it. I understand. Councilmember Craig's um, issue also. I, I got that too, but it just seems to me that it's a little too steep for the first offense. If you'd like us to talk, because notice it is a maximum fine, but it would be the standard fine. But usually, That's the maximum first offense? Yeah. Oh, well, what's what's the, what's our range? Anywhere from nothing I, to 100? Zero to we, well, the, the, usually how this is in, enforced is, is you give a warning first usually that's not what this says though it's not what it says but that's the the practical stuff i think i, I have i have confidence in our police force that they can be I, I feel that i have confidence in our police force that they would be very discretional discretional on how they would approach the situation myself that's the way i feel yeah but we have black and white for a reason correct. so correct so i i mean in my mind i would think that that i would i would like to see where first offense is 25 dollars quite frankly because any any little bit is enough to wake someone up, and twenty five dollars is something that you're going to get paid without any problems, you know. And, and I think it'll it'll send the message without going over the top. And then uh, the second offense, I'd like to see a hundred dollars. And as far as the third offense goes, I'm okay with five hundred. I mean, if someone doesn't get the message after two balls going down home plate, then uh, my other question. Strike out. Would be on that. Would uh, is this is any of this going to get posted at the parks then? In other words, are we going to have signage that's going to let them know, or do we have signage right now that lets them is know? There, is there signage already that says no alcohol? I can't remember. I, I thought there was. But I thought there was a minor street. I, yeah, I think there is. We, well, that's in up the plaza. See, that's they right. Get torn down so we See, that's what I like. See, if we have signage posting that, then that totally, totally changes the ball game, you know, on something like that. Where if it's signage posted that they're not supposed to be drinking, and then, I mean, penalty's a penalty. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, well, but if that's your attitude, I want to make it five thousand dollars. <laughs> well, well, because that's that's uh, not what's provided for in state law. This is uh, this is what's provided for in state law. That's the maximum. The hundred. The it's hundred is the maximum. And I'm looking right. at our. I'm looking at our socioeconomic base, and and if you're trying to teach someone, I think teaching them with a huge hammer at the maximum is is a little too hard a lesson. 
I think the lesson is, is, is going to be received with $25. I think that's going to be acceptable. I think they may grumble and grouse about it, but they're going to have $25 and I think they'll pay it. And I think, I think that's the idea. The idea is to educate people and, and to encourage them, discourage them from doing it again. And I think $25 will do it, I, I think. Okay, well, respectively, from a staff, well, may I let you guys talk it out? Um, the only thing I would say is, is if, if we do agree upon a, a lesser fine on the first offense, I really think the second offense is we need to stick to our guns on the second offense then because, I mean, come on, if they've been already cited once already, they know now, they have knowledge of this. So then it, then it becomes something that's like, okay, there's no reason to you know, be you nice about it then. 25, 100, and then leave the 500 on the third one, and then, then at that point you're talking about a misdemeanor. Would that be? I would say 50, 50, 100, and then, and then jump to the 500. I really do. Honestly. Oh, you're negotiating. I want yeah. to see a <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got to make it. You got to make the penalty to where they understand what the penalty is about. If you, you make it too less, then they're not going to get it either. Okay, I could, I could see, I could see fifty, not, but that would be the absolute max. Okay, okay. still with the discretion, obviously, always with the police department. So fifty, one hundred, and then five hundred. I could, I could live with, I could, I could live, with, live that. with that. I haven't I, heard from. <laughs> I like the fifty, one, and fifty, one hundred, and five hundred. <laughs> So I like that one. Well, I prefer to keep the 200 for the second offense because they've already been warned. <laughs> they probably got, you know, a courtesy warning and then they get the first offense for 50. If they do it again, I'd say the 200 is fine. Oh, you know, Norm, you raised an interesting point, which is, um, you probably didn't, maybe you didn't realize it, but the, but the uh, when you give someone an offense like that, and it says 50, does it actually tell you in there what the second one's gonna cost you? Oh. And the third one? Because that would be, that's pretty sweet. Now you're talking about, okay, you got notice and now you get hit the second time. It's like, hey, is this your signature? You, it's not like you didn't know. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I know that on some of the forms that we have, so I, I, I will say the, the real answer is it depends on the form. And I know that there are some forms that we use that have that right on there, like the code enforcement. If it doesn't, it should, is where I think we should go with that, though. And if that's our standard, maybe their form already has it. If these are our standard one, two, and three, they might have a form that says mm -hmm. that, first offense, second. So we might have to have all the forms drawn up for this mm -hmm. change in standard rates. Okay. So, so I, I guess my comment with um, um, Councilman Shosky's thing is that I wouldn't, I would be okay if he left it 50, 200, 500, only if the actual notice given to the first offender says that the, your second one's going to cost you 200. Otherwise, I would still go with 50, 100, 500. Okay. I actually like the first option you gave the best because I... 25? Yeah, I really did. But I, that's... I do also, but I'm just trying to be a good guy about this. <laughs> We're going to have a split council here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to table it, and everybody's going to think on it because we're going to yeah. we're going to come back for more discussion on it. Also, the signage thing in the park, even if it's posted in four places, if if somebody comes into the park from the wrong direction and miss it, I don't think that's adequate to jump on them right away. With um, right. I, I can't, I'm embarrassed to say how many times I've been there, and I still see new signage. Just because I'm... Are you talking about Greenhorn Park? Greenhorn Park. Where it's permitted? Oh, well, okay then. <laughs> okay, so, so another thing. So I, I, think, I think if we had come to an agreement today on, mm -hmm. on what this would be, then, um, then they would change it, and then next time around we would be mm -hmm. voting on it. I think exactly. that was the idea. Right. Okay, so, but... So but watch, though. If we don't come to an agreement, let's say we split... Can this can then get tabled to the next uh, next council meeting, and we bring we it up again? We won't know what to bring you. We won't know what to bring. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to bring a I, we're going to bring a fifth map. Oh, maybe not. What what are we what are you going to vote on? Right. As it exists, exactly. you got to give us a change to give you a document to vote on. So a split a split council decision kills this. It, you no. Mean, would you it can be? We still have a majority. So, so uh, let me make sure that I understand. Uh, the first thing is, is that you are looking to bring this back to uh, another meeting. No. No, you're, you would like to... I, I, want, I need clarification. So if this council, 
with with four seated members currently yeah. split on a two two and couldn't decide on, on and then on, it goes nowhere right okay so so uh, so it goes nowhere but it could be reintroduced at a later time when when there's a when there's a full council and you can get a three two vote right sure yeah well I make a motion that we direct staff to bring this back with a fine of fifty dollars for first offense two hundred dollars for second offense and the five hundred dollar optional misdemeanor for the third offense and that they um, make the language on the form to let the person know that the second offense is going to cost them two hundred dollars so that won't be in the ordinance that'll be a direction that's a direction for staff okay. so all of this is direction it's not an ordinance it's just great a direction to bring it back okay that's um, a motion and I'll say if, if I might if I might detail that motion okay. if I could so I would ask that if that come back that it come back at the November 16th meeting I have I have reasons for that like I said I second what you said so there was a second so all in favor is that with is that okay yeah, with my amendment? okay that's fine. Aye. 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 all opposed passes all right we'll see you on the 16th Meeting adjourned. No. Oh. Request. <laughs> Just enough. <laughs> okay, Commissioner. Uh, actually, Steve, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a, a one specific thing that I wanted to kind of go through. We had uh, talked to you before about the police building. Right now, uh, the federal fiscal year starts on October 1, and uh, the USDA Rural Development is, is finalizing the underwriting. They have all the information. There haven't been any issues that have come, come up. Um, the funding commitment is pending the federal budget authorization. As you may know, Congress doesn't really pass budgets anymore. Uh, I can't remember if it's like there was two over a period of eight years during the last presidential administration, but they passed continuing resolutions. So right now the continuing resolutions have passed the House, but the, um, uh, the Senate hasn't, hasn't done it. We were concerned that this funding might get held up uh, because of the debt limit, however, that was taken care of with the hurricane funding. So that's one thing down. Um, so we're hopeful that by the end of the month, the allocation will be there. Can't guarantee that. If it doesn't get there and it looks like it's gonna be a while, there are other alternatives that we'll bring up. At this point, we're looking to bring back the authorization for bid on October 19th meeting, but if, if it's not ready, we may have that subject to um, appropriations being ready. So the good news is, is that the bad things that could have happened, happened. You always worry about that with federal fiscal years. Yeah. It's just, we have to wait for the, the Congress to do their thing and then get the money down to USDA so that they can allocate it in this um, year and then get this guy out to bid. Yeah. So. yeah. so any questions on that? We're, you're gonna hear about it again probably a couple more times before. Okay. Yeah. Seeing none, then I uh, just wanted to mention the fire department is recruiting for um, people. So if there are people out in the audience that would like to be firefighters, please let us know or get a hold of them. Also, the um, Forest Service signed the NEPA decision notice for their property that we're working with on the, uh, the Greenway project down on Wairika Creek. So uh, that's moving along. Some of those things are significant. Um, hurdles that you have to overcome. He's put four letter words in there like NEPA and it's uh, just something you've got to do. And then we also submitted today a application for funding that will go to the local transportation commission to try to get some money to complete the trail between where the sidewalk ends going up Greenhorn mm -hmm. and the uh, Greenhorn Park where the, where the pavement on the trail starts again. So. Anyway. That's just a little bitty section, isn't it? Pretty small section, yeah. but it's still pretty expensive to okay. uh, go out and, and pave that. So we're looking for some money. You know, it, we're competing against the other um, jurisdictions in the county, and we would like, but you know, we we think it's a very good project. It could compete well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention, and maybe you've heard this as well, is that I'm beginning to hear from people. Uh, some of them are actually up here, but. Other people as well that housing 
is tightening up here in terms of rentals on both apartments and houses. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm hearing that it's becoming more constant. So uh, good news, bad news. The, the bad news is people are having trouble finding rentals and maybe having to commute to jobs further away or whatever their um, obligations are. But the demand may also drive uh, more new construction because we really haven't seen a lot of that in the last almost decade. Now that yeah. I so. Anyway. Yes, that would, we'd like to see some new construction. Absolutely. That would be a good thing. <laughs> you good? I'm good. <coughs> Commissioner's statements. Rob? I'm good. Thank you. Norm? Um, I went down to the League of California Cities event in Chico last week, and we uh, visited the Museum of Northern California Art. It's a new facility. It's in an old uh, veterans building, and Chico's very nice. Uh, they're just getting this museum going. But then after that, we took a tour of the city and did public art throughout downtown Chico, and it, it was a, probably around 20 pieces of public art. They handed out this brochure and everything. So it's something that I think we need to do in our city is promote our public art. And for the future, I think we need to discuss public art in new projects. Like um, when I was on the Mountain View City Council, we were very receptive to public art and we allowed different things like a reduction of their fees or increased square footage if they put in public art with their project. Mm -hmm. And I remember before I left, there was Insane. over 50 pieces of public art in the city. And that a long time ago, I bet you there's over 100 pieces now of public art. And it's amazing the art throughout the town that I've seen. So I mean, it's something, you know, we've got some public art in town, but we need to encourage more. Sounds good. Anything else? No. Okay. I don't have nothing to add other than um, I agree with what Norm says there. In fact, I would like to talk with them because I got some ideas that was I've been floating around with to go change that. So that would be real good. And actually, I uh, heard of other cities doing art in the park. And I think Greenhorn would be great to have one Saturday a month in the summertime with artists act out there actually applying their craft and people watching and stuff. I think that'd be pretty cool. Well, that may be working with Liberty Arts and trying to get them mm -hmm. involved in the project. Well, there's yeah, a couple different organizations and I've actually spoke to a few of them that on the Greenhorn thing, matter of fact. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll get into that a little later. So Okay. But that's all I got. There are a few events going on this weekend, so I hope everybody uh, gets outside and enjoys them. And I think that's it. Anything else? Thank you for coming.